Everyone loves it when we get up close with giant vipers and notorious spiders. You know, the animals that could end my career with one good bite. But I figured we'd take a break from all that and just go on a nice relaxing float down one of my favorite rivers. Just a few days of relaxing. I have to go five miles back this way. Kayaking. And maybe see some harmless little turtles while we're at it. Oh god. Like that. So of course, today we're going to be looking for the largest turtle species in North America, most famous for its insane size and jaw pressure. But along the way, we're also going to be getting up close to some of the rarest and most unique turtle species these rivers have to offer. On our first day on the river, it looks pretty nice. It's sunny and shallow, which means turtles are going to be really easy to spot. Oh, look at this little guy. This, this is one of the more common species that you're going to be finding in these rivers. This is a river cooter. This is actually a really big one. You can see that right there. This is a large female. Now, despite being a common turtle, they're actually really gorgeous. If you look at all those colors on the back of the shell, really beautiful turtle. And this is a nice size one. They will get bigger than this, but this is a nice size female. Now, you can tell it's a female because one, the females get a lot bigger, but two, the males are going to have these super long claws, and they're going to have these little short digging claws, and that's going to be for digging nests. Whenever they need to nest, they come up to these little sandbanks, dig a little hole right behind them, lay their eggs, bury them up, and go back into the river, and those short claws are a lot better for digging. They're very easy to confuse with red-eared sliders and other slider species. Those eyes are kind of a dead giveaway that it's a river cooter. You can tell a lot of different river cooters by those little eyes and that little nose. And they're not going to have that big red ear like a red ear slider. It's just kind of open in her mouth. They will bite, but I have to stick my finger in her mouth for her to bite me. Really cool turtle, really common species out here. We're going to go ahead and let her go and keep looking for more, but that is Awesome. Very common turtle out here. Big river cooter. Hey, I want to kind of get her A nice common species to see, and they've always got some really gorgeous colors in this cleaner water. While this river is shallow enough to walk for turtles, it's much more effective to hunt turtles by kayak, since it's the quietest way to move down and upstream without disturbing them. But even without spooking them, these turtles can be hard to catch. That right there was a Pearl River map turtle, a really rare species of map turtle only found in branches of the Pearl River systems. They're a species that's actually set to be protected sometime later this year. They're also a turtle that we still have a lot to learn about. We'll definitely be seeing more later though, and hopefully I don't miss my next turtle. Here we go, we got a musk turtle. He's not fast. Oh, look at that little guy. They just kind of sit there when you come up to them sometimes. It's really cool. This is one of my favorite turtles in here. This is a razorback musk. Look at that thing. Look at his head. Gorgeous coloration. Almost looks like a little snapping turtle face. Oh, look at that. It's got all that pink coloration. This is absolutely one of the coolest turtles out here. Little bit of a shredded shell, you can see. A little bit torn up there, got a lot of algae on them. But uh, overall, still a very pretty turtle. When they're not all beat up like this, they still have a lot of color on their shell, a lot of tan, a lot of spots, a lot of different camouflage. But he'd still be pretty camouflage with all that. The only reason I really saw him is because he was kind of moving up. And when I spotted him, he just froze. He just stopped. And this would be a male. He's got that big, long tail. That's one way I can tell. And one way you can tell that this is a musk turtle is there's all this exposed just turtle. The bottom plastron just does not cover much of the turtle. 
and musk turtles, to compensate for that, taste really nasty. They've got a really foul smell. And while razorbacks are some of the cleanest of the musk turtles, they still do have some deterrence to where predators aren't going to want to eat them. In fact, one of the main predators of musk turtles in here is going to be actually larger musk turtles or alligator snapping turtles. Now one thing that's funny is it's said that looking for an alligator snapping turtle, you're more likely to find one while looking for one of these. A lot of people will come out here looking for musk turtles and end up finding alligator snapping turtles. So the methods of search are very similar, which is going along here, looking under logs, or looking during times when turtles are out on the move. So this is a really good sign for an alligator snapping turtle. Really pretty turtle, really great time seeing one. We're going to go ahead and let this one go and keep looking for our main target turtle. But that is honestly one of my favorite things out here and a beautiful thing to see. All right, see you, little buddy. He was kind of heading upstream, so. Bottom. Look at that. Look at him go. This turtle is a great sign for our target species. Razorbacks have very similar habits and lifestyles to ASTs. One of those turtles just gets a little bit bigger than the other one. Next day, we're back at it again, and we've got some really nasty weather on its way, but we should still manage to see some turtles today. Here we go. Doing, little buddy. Hi. Have a look at that little guy. That is a Pearl River map turtle. This is actually an incredibly rare species. They only live in one river system in the whole world, and it's this one. Have a look at that. He is clean. Cute little guy. Now this would actually be a male, and this would be a full-grown male. They don't get any bigger than this as a male. The females get massive. They get about that big full grown. We've actually filmed a female in the past and they are just monstrous. He's not coming out of his shell for me real much. He's just gonna sit and hide there. Sometimes they do that, sometimes they're very active. It just depends on the turtle you get. Now this species is actually gonna be ending up on the endangered species list, I believe come this October. So they're gonna be getting some major protection. However, the protection of the individual turtle, in my opinion, is not the big overall victory for the turtle. The victory for this turtle is going to be if their habitats can be protected because they're actually in really good numbers in the river systems that they live. The problem is they only live in one major river system in the United States. And what that means is if anything were to happen to that, then these turtles just might get wiped. So that's the most important part and legislatively that's what's going to need to happen is the protection of the river long term if these species are going to do well. Well, a really awesome animal. We're gonna go ahead and let him go and keep looking for more, but that is awesome. Little male Pearl River map turtle. All right, see you, little buddy. And remember how I said we are still learning about Pearl River map turtles? Well, since I figured we'd see some, I invited some help on gathering data. This is one of the most Eastern populations of this species, so they haven't really been studied here before at all. Measurements, location, DNA samples, all that good stuff is being taken care of while we're out here. Macaulay, what do you got there? A big old female, megacephalic, pro river map Very nice. What do you know about them? They like to eat clams. They live in the Pearl River. Me too. Oh my gosh. We have so, I have so much in common with these turtles. Goodbye, hobo uno. Blub. That's awesome. Super light in the in the water too. And the next day the weather is still looking pretty gnarly. Still really good for turtle movement, but bad for visibility and camera gear. I'm also flying solo today, which makes filming a bit harder on days like this. So right now is actually my third day on the river. And uh not seeing too much obviously because the rain, but you know, weird weather could constitute a weird find so hence why we do it but still beautiful to be out here we will take as long as it takes to find what we're looking for i've never seen a more perfect log for like a rainbow snake to be under in my life so but there's not look at there should be one like right right there but there's not See how it's like half in the water? <sighs> yeah, remember all that? It's always a good day to be on the river. That was going downstream. Now, we're going back up. And I gotta drag my kayak through the shallow sections. 
I have to go five miles back this way. Now I'm just saying, y'all really can't blame me for being salty right now. I've been on this river for a few days, I'm all by myself, and it's just a lot of work moving up and down this river, especially while I'm looking for a turtle that could crush my fingers. I'm not saying I don't enjoy it, it's just a good bit of work looking for these animals. So if you guys could, make sure to subscribe, leave a like on the video, leave a comment on how big you think the turtle we're gonna find is, because it's a lot of work to do this. We've been out for a few days here, and let me tell you, what you're seeing is only the tip of the iceberg. It is just hours and hours of searching for these animals, with only a few minutes of video footage. With the weather finally clearing up the next day, the river has been left high and murky, which makes spotting turtles via kayak much harder. So if I want to find our dragon, I'm going to have to find one in a burrow. Visibility is probably only about 6 inches, meaning any turtle is going to be right up in my face. Not exactly how I'd like to find a turtle that can get bigger than me, but it's my only option right now. Snorkeling along these ledges is the best way to find these turtles, and it's also a good way to sneak up on other animals, like this little unsuspecting water snake I spotted. Hey, hey. <laughs> oh, look at that little guy. He didn't even flinch until I got right up to him. Not very aware of me in the water. That is a little midland water snake. Have a look at that little guy. Woo! This is a whippy animal. He is trying to bite me. The Midland water snakes are a subspecies of the northern water snake. They're going to look kind of similar. This one's interesting. If you look at his back there, oh, it's all right. He has no pattern on his back. And he's got a little stripe on his belly there. Definitely an aberrant Midland water snake here. It's going to be this and diamondback water snakes inhabiting this river. Those are going to be your most common snakes along here. They also are going to get water moccasins. Now one thing that's crazy about these snakes is the alligator snapping turtles in this area have actually been known to eat them. In fact, oftentimes when you catch them, they'll spit up whatever is in their belly, and they do oftentimes spit up remains of those two snake species. This is a medium size one. They do get a bit bigger than this, but this would be considered an adult. And as you can see, they are very bitey. They're oftentimes very easy to see and catch along all these little branches. And even right underneath them, all up in this stuff, you can have what we're looking for in shallow water. Alligator snapping turtles and all the other turtle species out here are going to be hanging out in the same stuff that these snakes are, pretty much. Wow, well that's a beautiful snake. Good little catch. We're going to go ahead and put this guy back and keep snorkeling for turtles, but that is awesome. Alright, see you little buddy. Take off. I can go see him down there. A little bit, <laughs> for a moment. I can see him until he got under everything. That's cool. These turtles are going to be hiding in burrows or under logs. Whenever I'm kayaking for them, I'm typically looking along the edges of the water for a nose to stick out, or for one sitting under a log. But with snorkeling for them, I have to dive down and look in burrows or right underneath logs, which can be really sketchy and you've got to be careful where you're putting your hands. After snorkeling around for a little while, I ended up seeing a really nice big log in one of the deeper sections, and I figured it'd be a good place for a turtle to be hanging out. And sure enough, I was right. Got one. <laughs> Let's not do that. Yes! Woohoo! <laughs> Have a look at that turtle. There we go. Whoa! Don't do that. This one's smart. He tried to reach right under his shell to get me. That thing has quite a mouth on him. That is a nice size alligator snapping turtle right there. Well, this is exactly what we're out here looking for. That is an alligator snapping turtle. This one's probably anywhere between 30 and 40 pounds. Definitely not the biggest one, but uh, still a very large turtle. Just a smaller alligator snapping turtle. Now you're gonna notice, unlike the common snapping turtle, they typically are gonna sit with their mouth open and they're just gonna go 
straight for a bite. They're not gonna be super whippy, although this one is moving his head up quite a bit. That's just what they do to keep this hand from getting under there, is they try to break free, essentially. Now they inhabit a lot of different regions throughout the southeast. Typically, they are gonna be in river systems. This is actually a very small river for alligator snapping turtles to be found in, but uh, it is definitely big enough to harbor some nice size alligator snapping turtles. Now one of this size might be able to take a finger off if you look at those jaws right there. You would not wanna get bit, especially directly, by an alligator snapping turtle. We're talking about the jaws of a turtle that crush catfish skulls, that crush small bass, that crush perch all day long. He'd be sitting under there, waiting for this water flow to bring along some fish. And what they've got in their mouth, and you might be able to see it right there, is a little lure, and it looks like a worm. And they sit there, and they just kind of wiggle it up and down until a little fish comes by, and they just grab it as it goes for that little lure. It's a really, really incredible thing to see. It's honestly one of the most special turtles out here that we have in the south. Now alligator snapping turtles, on average, whenever they're full grown, end up over 100 pounds. But the world record alligator snapping turtle is over 250 pounds. That is insanely massive. So to put that in perspective, I just said this is a turtle somewhere between 30 and 40 pounds. So full grown, these turtles can be five times this weight, which is absolutely insane. These are one of my favorite looking turtles. Just have a look at that thing. You can see all these little spikes, all these little bumps, and the longer that they live in these rivers with all this sand, that's gonna get more smoothed out as this turtle gets older. That's something more typical of your older turtles that live in rivers like this. But in a lot of areas, a lot of swamps and stuff like that, they keep these very pronounced spikes as they get older. But it's just in this habitat in particular, they end up getting pretty smoothed out. If I change that angle, you're gonna bite me from there. That could have been not good. Now alligator snapping turtles are typically gonna be seen by people on trout lines. You might catch one while you're fishing. A lot of times people are gonna see these turtles drowned in hoop nets. Now when people are out setting their hoop nets, they're typically just targeting catfish. They're not really thinking turtles. So when a turtle goes in the trap for the bait, gets it, tries to come out, can't figure it out, can't figure out how to get out of the trap, and there's no air. So the turtle ends up drowning. And then trout lines just continuously drag the turtle down until the turtle drowns, which is very unfortunate. This used to be a very common thing to see along rivers and streams and lots of other areas here in the south. But now they're becoming increasingly less common and it's really difficult to see the big ones nowadays, which is really unfortunate. This is such an incredible turtle species. I mean, just look at this thing. It's a little dragon. <laughs> I mean, all he's got to do is breathe fire and this is, this is, this is a dragon. That's a incredible turtle grows so much bigger than any of the other turtles that you're going to be getting back here i mean it's just insane now alligator snapping turtles are actually our largest freshwater turtle here in north america but over in china we also had the yangtze soft shell and i think that grows like well over the size of a full-grown alligator snapping turtle like i believe they get over 300 pounds correct me if i'm wrong but i think the world record was actually over 600 which is an insanely big turtle. I mean, we are talking boat-sized, car-sized turtle. We're talking massive. Well, this is an absolutely insane find, especially on this little river system. Really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing. And check out the last time I caught an alligator snapping turtle. They're always really fun to see. And we will see you guys next time. All right, let's go ahead and let this guy go. He is getting kind of heavy. All right, see you, bud. <laughs>